Good evening, and once again, welcome to McCray's Keep. Tonight, we are going to be continuing work on our Ashton Graymore figure from Critical Role Season 3. Our rendition of this is a 3D figure, anyway, in the form of some fan art. Uh, if you were with us last time, we got most of his clothes done and his skin. We yet to do his uh, weapon, his hammer, um, the uh, official fan art for the character has a very prominent, pretty cool crystal-headed hammer. Should be some, uh, <coughs> should be able to do some cool things with that. But first, we're going to start with another uh, prominent feature from uh, from the fan art, and that is this uh, kind of crystalline. Uh, I don't know if it's a view into his <laughs> skull cavity or if it's something coming out. Um, but uh, we are going to uh, treat it as it's uh, something coming out. So I uh, found a, a uh, model that I like that was crystalline in form and brought it into Blender. Uh, anybody who has any questions about some of that stuff uh, with regard to Blender, uh, just let me know in the chat or let me know um, in the comments and uh, we can go over a little bit how to uh, how to get additional um, uh, models into this model uh, manipulate them and get them into place uh, but for right now we are going to paint this part of it it's kind of a bright cyan um, I think is the color that best uh, kind of uh, describes it so that's what we're going to go with here and so now that we are in edit mode uh, we are going to see what we can do here we do want the specularity up on this we want the roughness down on this and this is going to be kind of a cyan color. That's a little more on the green side of things. There we go. Let's try that. Uh, and we can even <coughs> a touch transparency on that. I don't know that that's going to make a lot of difference in this case. But let's get back into object mode here. And what do we think? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I like it. I like where it's going. Excuse my cat in the background. He's got things to say. All right, so let's uh, let's get back into edit mode here. And uh, work on this weapon. When we're done with uh, Ashton here tonight, we are going to export him. And we're going to import him. Um, into McCray's Keep, and we're going to get him into the scene that we're working on there. Um, Laura Bailey's character Imogen is already in there, as well as Sam Regal's fresh cut grass. Uh, and I'm sure they can, uh, they will be more than happy to get the help. So, first things first, <coughs> let's see by just see what this links okay so the entire handle here is one mesh that's fine um, we are going to set that uh, as a kind of wooden color um, actually in the art it's more metal so why don't we go with that so let's add a space here and we are going to grab some of the details out of here and do some more uh, some more fine work with that uh, but for right now And we 
pick our shader nodes. And then this is going to be a gray because we want it looking metal. And we are going to raise the specularity and turn down the roughness. And we're going to assign that. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks metal enough. Looks like we've got a little typo here I'm going to take care of from last time. All right, so um, let's clean up some of the details on this uh, axe handle before we go and uh, do the actual head of the weapon. So, and in the art, uh, the bottom has a kind of red crystal uh, on the handle with some gold around it. So we're going to honor that um, before we move on up. So why don't we, it looks like a kind of transparent red crystal. So we are going to grab this. And because we've got a nice regular geometric shape here, we can use our friend, select more. That is control plus. And I think we might want one more. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe two. Yeah, let's go one. Okay, and this is kind of a transparent red or pink. So let's uh, probably just looks pink because the transparency. Again, we want this to be shiny. Um, the roughness does not translate to X3D, so uh, we don't need to worry about that, actually. I've got a couple of things here. Get rid of this. They do affect things in Blender, but uh, they don't affect things in uh, once we export, so we're not going to bother using them. Okay, and then this is going to be a red. Then we're going to use some transparency on that. Sign that. There we go. That's pretty cool. And then we're going to have a little gold highlight here for this uh, next part. And I'm trying to think if there's a good, I guess what we can do is this. We're just going to go right around here. And then we can do a uh, select more, probably. Okay, select more, 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 more. Got to get at least one more to m so that it meets up down here. Let's see what it looks like up here. I think it's good enough. Yeah, sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Getting into his arm there. All right, so let's do this as and this again, this is going to be a nice shiny gold color, very specular. Again, we don't care about this. Um, sign that. I think I want it a little darker. All right. 
Uh, maybe not that dark. All right. So let's save that. Now there's a number of kind of, uh, looks like two kind of handle wraps uh, around the handle. And that actually works pretty good with what I'm seeing here that are purple. So why don't we, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do everything from this line up to this line. And the same here, down to down here, one of these two. But I don't think we've got a great... Here, what we are going to do here, because I don't want to select around these hands, that's a nightmare. So what we're going to do, you know, see, we're getting in here and selecting all of that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to select this, and then we're going to select everything that's linked to that. And then we are going to deselect some stuff. And we're going to do this in wireframe mode, so we don't have to go round and round and round and round. Okay, so we'll get rid of all of this. Get rid of all of this. Let's tilt this a little bit. I think it's super critical here because this is kind of right where we're going to be working. Excuse me for a moment. And we're back. All right, so let's go back into solid mode here. So now we've got all this stuff under his hands, all nicely selected. And all we got to do is clean up around here and down here, and that should be much easier than trying to get in, in and amongst all the fingers and whatnot. <coughs> so I'm actually going to add to this first. And as far as this little groove goes, we're going to grab the whole groove. Here's our other side. <coughs> Again, we're going to grab the groove here. And we're going to get rid of Let's get rid of all this. Go and fix up our groove over here. Uh, 
And you can see why sometimes you want to <coughs> turn down that specularity while you're working. I'm not going to be here that long, so I'm not too terribly worried about it. But sometimes that reflection can be kind of a pain in the butt. All right, so this bottom edge of the top grip looks pretty good. And let's go and deal with this top one. And deselecting is kind of nice because you don't have to worry about, well, you don't much have to worry about, certainly in this instance, overspray because we're keeping to the outside of what we want to keep selected. And we, <coughs> for those of you who've been following along, we have some news on Blender 3.0. You may, if you watched last time or watched the video, we installed Blender 3.0, but it has a slight problem. Uh, well, actually, for us, it's a pretty big problem. Um, <coughs> the export to the X3D format uh, does not work. Uh, but the good news is, I've reported the bug on GitHub, and it has been acknowledged. Where do we want to go with this? How much of this do we want? So hopefully, there will be some movement on that in the near future. But even if there's not, uh, <coughs> they know about it. Uh, they know what's going on with it. And so I imagine some sort of fix will be forthcoming. All right, so I think that's fine. So let's go down here. Let's do this top one. And I am going to, because it's bugging me, turn the specularity down on that. Or actually, turn the roughness up. <coughs> and again, that's just for um, Blender stuff. The, the roughness does not translate over to X3D. So it's just what we're seeing here in the Blender viewport. And it was getting annoying. So we are going to clean up this top edge here. And now we just have to clean up this bottom edge. Yeah, so why don't we do this? Turn that up here. We're going to turn that up. <coughs> okay. Just for consistency. All right. So now these wraps are kind of a light purplish. So 
And let's do this. And I don't think we want wraps to be reflective. go I think we are going to hit these as uh, as the same gold highlight here so let's uh Let's see if we can't get this lined up so we can uh, Try to select this right through to the other side so we're not <coughs> spinning around in circles. And if we got to clean up a little bit, that's okay. I think it's still going to be worth our time here. See how we did. I'm deselecting because I just want to do the select more trick on this one. That wasn't worth the time to go wireframe on that. More cleanup than it was worth. We can get a quick stripe around here. Just with three little camera moves. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've hosed that up because I didn't first deselect this. All right, so let's uh, let's do this. So let's assign it. Let's deselect it, and then here we have to reselect.
assign. And now we'll make sure to deselect that. That one, deselect again. And now we've got this kind of funny half one up here, which we are gonna do. So, let's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we're going to start here. Let's see what this looks like. Whoa. Yeah, we're just grabbing a single one here. see how we do on this. And let's save that. All right, now we are up to the head of this hammer and let's find out what's what up here. So let's grab this and do, okay, so it's the entire hammer head, that's awesome. Minus the chains, which we will grab separately. That is perfect. Okay, so this is kind of like the blue crystal, almost like this business in his head. Um, but we're going to make this a little more transparent. It's almost like a, a chunk of ice. So let's see what we can do here. Yes, specular, base color. We can go a little darker on the color, I think. But 
we do want a healthy dose of transparency. Sign. Okay, and you can actually see parts of the handle right through it, which is super sweet. Now we could go in here and maybe do some additional work on this face. Um, but for right now, let's grab these chains. I don't know what this is going to grab. Just one. All right. So we're just going to go and start clicking on stuff here. <coughs> Try and get as much as we can. I don't know what what stuff here is linked and what's not linked, but and there's some stuff like this here, which we're going to take a look at when we're done uh, with these chains. Did that get everything? Oh, that's sweet. These faces aren't even selected. That's even better. All right, so on these, we're going to have it a lot like the handle color. It's going to be just a, a pretty base metallic kind of gray. I think we'll go a little darker gray on this one. All right, so now you've noticed some of these things. Let's see what we can do here. What does this select? Yeah, and then this. So for these, we're just gonna make this fully transparent. So the color doesn't matter. I'm going to add one now. And none of the stuff really matters here. Um, because we're just going to go a sign and there you can see now we can see right through these links like we should let's go over here yeah and let's assign that Any of that on this side? Doesn't look like it. I think there's some underneath, but we'll get there. Nothing over here. All right, yeah, and then there's some down below. I 
And we're still going to do the link thing because I don't think I got quite everything there. Now, A and assign. Select that. So let's save that. So cool. So one thing we haven't done yet on this figure is his fingernails, which we're going to do right now. Specular. I think we want his hair to be some, have some specularity to it. And I think uh, we might do some more work on this handle. We'll see. Just get into these nails right away here. We're going one more up here. There we go. So, and let's do... gonna do something like this. Yeah, zoomed right out through his body. Sure, I like that. Keeps with the theme. All right, so let's do this. See, and I don't know, sometimes you can get away with something like this.
That one looks much better. It's wonderful. All righty. Back to our friend, the thumb. Excuse me. And we're moving right through these. Ooh, that one was clean. Wow. Too bad.
Boy, that one's wonky. We're going to add a little bit of fine detail here, I think. These um, grooves here, am I just asking for trouble? Ugh, maybe not. Alrighty, well, I think, folks, that might be all she wrote for Mr. Ashton Graymore. Okay, so we will save this. Then we are going to do our export to Extensible 3D. All right, now Going to switch windows here. That looks better. Just grab one of our characters here and change him up. Now, let's see what we can find for, oh boy, Earth Genasi might be a bit of an issue. But we're going to grab something that is, I don't know, something. Let's see what we can find here. It doesn't matter. And this is a barbarian. None of the level stuff really matters. Species. I think these are elemental genasi earth. So let's save this. Just before we do any of this noise, we should upload our figure. It's a character. We're going to choose that file now. Let's uh,
Oof, yeah. He's big. Uh, the, he's 20 megs, and this is, um, I believe, mostly a product of the transparency. So be advised when you have transparency in your figure, you're going to want to um, be aware of it, uh, use it sparingly. As you can see, we've got a busy cursor here, uh, and then the upload's in progress. It's still in progress uh, as we have our busy thing. And you'll see your cursor is busy for as long as that's going on, and then this will switch back to once it's done. So let's just give that a second. It shouldn't take too long. Even for such a large uh, model. And once that's in, we will look at it in the model lab, and then we will bring it into, into the scene. Hey, the file was uploaded, and we have an Ashton Graymore here, so let's take a look. Remember, when we bring things in, they're not necessarily scaled for the type of use that we're going to do here. So we are going to uh, bring it in, and we're going to do this. Oh my god, he's huge. So let's just go uh, figure scale is 0 0.035. And let's uh, reset our view here. Ha, ah, that's better. Um, our uh, Eldritch Foundry figures, um, if you noticed, um, in, uh, in Blender, the stage is actually below the normal level. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, move our figure up a little bit. And you can see light there between it, so you're one too far. There, now he's perfectly level with the ground. If we look at it from the front, you can see that too. This cone that you're seeing here represents his viewpoint, uh, which we also need to uh, line up with everything. So let's do a top down here and see where he's looking. As those of you may remember, we want to be looking right at this wall here. And it looks like he is by default, and that's uh, bonus us. And you can see even here in the keep, uh, the transparency of his hammer, uh, hammer head anyway, is uh, is uh, honored. And then you can see on the handle here we get reflections. That that specularity that we were talking about, uh, that was not showing in Blender, but you can see the lights are reflecting off of it here. So now with this viewpoint. So let's go let's go side view first. We can move the viewpoint up. Or you could just type a number if you want to. That's fine. I think like 1.1 should be pretty close. Um, so you want this you want the point of the cone lined up with his eyes. So let's uh Okay, and you can see we've got to come in and out now. Let's get this. So we're just about there. We're going to try that. And now let's look at it from the front. And just scroll up. And again, this is the what we want. We want his basically his eyes right in the middle of this. So if we want to really tweak this, we can go tweak it like this maybe a little bit. Uh, and then maybe down just a touch, and again, that should be right. So if we switch into his viewpoint, we're too far backwards. See, we're in his head. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to go in or out, actually. Uh, I think we're going the wrong way here. There we go. That's perfect. If we look at this from the side, and... And this controls um, when we switch, especially in scene. In the model lab, 
This is just actually for doing the actual adjustment. It doesn't matter. But when we're in a scene and we switch into his viewpoint, we want that viewpoint to be basically where his eyes are. We don't want it to be in some random spot or we don't want it to be in the same spot for every figure. If you notice, um, we load up a dragon here. And his viewpoint is way up here, and you actually can see that his viewpoint is tilted down a little bit so that when you're up here, you're not looking over everything in a straight line. So you can you can manage the, the tilt up and down, the viewpoint uh, position, and then the tilt here. So we can tilt it like that. We can tilt it like this. We can tilt it like this. So uh, we want it always to be... Uh, Normally, for most characters, it's going to be looking. Um, it's going to be looking uh, straight ahead. But in extreme situations of extreme large characters or small characters, uh, you're going to want to angle that viewpoint a little bit. But uh, let's go back to our friend, Mr. Graymore. and you can see that he is right where we want him. If we had to, if he was facing a different direction, what we would do is we would turn on his rotational controls and then we could rotate him uh, to match up with the viewpoint. But uh, we don't have to do that in this case because he is looking good. All right, so let's get out of here. And let's go to our actual scene here. Not this scene. But we will load up the Eerie Cave. And those of you who were here last time can remember we've got a bit of a encounter going on here between some of the figures that we, um, we've been working on. Our Mind Flayer and our Demoness fighting Imogen and fresh cut grass. So again, we're going to uh, add in Ashton. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to a top-down view. Because uh, if you can't see all of the grid, but if you imagine the grid comes, here's the left line and up here somewhere is the top line. They all come in at zero, zero, which is the top left. So if we go click on this, you can see he's loading here and again, He's a pretty big figure, so he's going to take a second to get in here. But we will see him up in this area in just a second. And then we will drag him over and position him accordingly. The good news is, once he's in the scene, uh, you don't really have to worry about the load times. And again, this is uh, purely a uh, creative choice. You want to keep that file size down. Uh, stay away from the transparency. Uh, it is the expensive uh, part of describing the geometry. So we may go in there at some point and dial that back down just for performance reasons. Um, but uh, for right now, um, we're just going to let him load. We're going to get him in, get him in here, and we're going to see uh, see how things go. And just a couple more things while we're waiting here. This uh, drop down lets you uh, select and look at really any object that's uh, that's here in the uh, in the scene. So if we want to look at rock formation number four, we can click on that. That brings you right in here. You can right click on it, uh, get some information about it here. If you want to mess with the light, if it has a light, in this case it's just stone, so it probably doesn't have a light. Uh, you can certainly do that. Um, but if you wanted to turn the light source on, you could, and you could adjust it here uh, any way you wanted to. Uh, the magnetic, as we mentioned last time, means if you move this, uh, it snaps down to the floor. We've got it locked right now, which is why it didn't move. We could unlock that, and we could move this over a little bit and then lock it back up. That's fine.
seems to be some other problem with our loading our figure here. So we're gonna we're gonna try this again. And let's go. Grab this. We're gonna grab this. We're just gonna give him a blank one. Strangely enough, that's why these images are all having some sort of personal problem here. And I wonder if old Amazon is having some sort of personal problem here. Yeah, our figure's not the problem. We're having a problem with the with the character picture token. Bear with me one second. I can fix it. I know how.
We're just going to be right back, folks. Well, I guess I should learn how to use my own software. I guess the big thing we need to do here really is to pick the actual figure for the character. That helps. All right, so let's, uh, let's try this this way. Hey, and here he is. Imagine that. Live TV, folks. Let's put old Ashton over here. So, So here he is in the scene, but of course he's definitely facing the wrong direction. So let's, he should be looking over here. We don't want him doing that, so let's take a look. Yeah, we gotta turn him around. So why don't we go to this, and then we're gonna grab him like this. We're gonna magnetize him. We're gonna rotate him. Let's make sure he is looking at the bad guys. Now let's see what he sees. Whoa, okay, pretty good. Um, Gonna rotate him some more that way. See what he sees now. There we go, that's much better. So if we just do this, tilt down a little bit, zoom in a little. Let's get it so we can see our heroes a little bit better here. Oop. Oh. 
Yeah, there he is. Looking good. Yeah, wow, well, we're really zoomed in here, so pretty hypersensitive on the mouse. So, perfect. Love it. Odds are getting better. Odds are getting much, much better. So, beautiful. Let's move her over here a little bit. Nice. And it's her light source that's throwing the light here. So we could do away with that if we wanted to. We can give, turn on, uh, have his hammer glowing here. Turn that on. Make it a little bluer. And there we go.
Excellent. Love it. So that is going to conclude the stream for tonight. Sorry for the minor technical glitches with me not knowing how to add a character to a scene. Um, <laughs> but uh, we will do better next time. Uh, next time we'll be grabbing uh, the fourth character. Uh, still not sure who that's going to be. Um, but we'll figure that out. Um, for now, we've got a nice new uh, character in our scene here. Uh, helping out with our other two heroes against these bad guys. And uh, uh, for right now, that's all there's going to be. So tomorrow we will grab another figure and we will start working on that one and uh, and we will go from there. And that should be, we'll be to the halfway point or past the halfway point in our party and uh, and we'll see how it looks then. But until then, thanks for watching. Make sure to follow the stream. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube if that's where you're watching. And uh, thank you uh, very much.